Hi, I just picked up this range officer champion. Um, it's a commander sized 1911 in 9mm and I figured I would give my thoughts and impressions uh, before I changed it too much from stock. I have already uh, put a little grip tape on the front and changed the trigger. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, as you can see, no magazine. Nothing in the chamber. So uh, this is uh, one inch smaller than the full size range officer. The champion comes with three dot low profile Novak rear sight fiber optic front sight. It's a little bit different than the full size target model which comes with the target rear sights. And you can also get this in an operator version which has a small rail and comes with night sights. Uh, out of the box, fit and finish seems really good. Uh, no play in the slide, nice and smooth. Lockup is really good. Zero play in the barrel. It is a bull barrel with a full length two piece guide rod. You can see here it has a reverse spring plug. Uh, it's a alloy frame with a carbon steel slide and it has a ramped barrel. Uh, in the box it comes with a little cleaning brush, it comes with magazine carrier, Kydex paddle holster, um, I did take a heat gun to this and loosened this up a little bit as the retention, even on its loosest setting, was, was too tight. Comes with an Allen key to adjust the retention on the paddle holster. Comes with an Allen key to loosen the rear sight retention screw in case you want to drift adjust it. Comes with uh, a couple of keys. This has the Springfield ILS system, which is their safety locking system in the event that you want to lock the gun safe. What you would do is drop the hammer, insert the key into this little hole here, and turn it until the two dots are horizontal. Uh, and at that point, uh, the gun would be locked up and you wouldn't be able to even move the trigger or the hammer. It comes with a little piece of bent wire like this that is also, as a result of this ILS system, the mainspring is not captured with uh, a pin in the upper hole of the mainspring here. So if you wanted to disassemble this gun and remove the mainspring housing, this makes it a little bit easier. It's not required, so if you lose it, it's not a big deal. But what you would normally do is cock the hammer like that to, take the, uh, to compress the mainspring, drop this into the little hole, release the hammer. You can see this is now capturing the mainspring, mainspring cap inside the uh, mainspring housing. It also comes, uh, as you can see, this had the orange fiber optic front sight installed. It comes with a red fiber optic rod and a green fiber optic rod in case you want to change it. I thought that was a nice touch. It comes with two nine round magazines. They are flush fit magazines. Uh, and the sights are set up for a six o'clock hold. I, I don't like six o'clock hold. I prefer a you know, point of aim, point of impact. So I will be swapping this rear sight out. Uh, I happen to have another Novak sight lying around. It doesn't have the dots. It's not a big deal. I don't really use the rear dots. Um, but this should lower it just enough for me uh, to get it to a hold that I prefer. Normally it comes with a uh, aluminum three dot three hole trigger that uh, I have replaced. This is a cylinder and slide trigger. I did weigh the two of them. They are the exact same, within a grain or two, uh, the exact same weight. Uh, and I'd also put some grip tape on here. None of the, rain, none of the range officers have front strap checkering. Uh, it's obviously not required with a light recoiling round like a nine millimeter and a relatively uh, solid gun like this. But uh, I prefer a little extra grip for when I'm doing magazine changes and I'm holding the gun with just my fingertips. Uh, I prefer a little extra grip there. And also when I'm shooting weak hand, uh, I prefer a little extra grip. So out of the box, it had a six and three quarter pound trigger pull. Uh, that's probably by design in the event that uh, you planned on carrying this, uh, or maybe it's to make it Massachusetts compliant or some other states that have conditions on the uh, trigger weight. Before I even took it to the range for the first time, I did do a little trigger work to get this down to five and a half pounds, um, and that was with the stock trigger still installed. It still had a little bit of a hitch or a catch 
partway through the trigger pull. And I realized when I put this replacement cylinder slide in, it didn't quite fit into the frame, which made me take a closer look at the stock trigger. And if you I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but if I can get the light to reflect on it, you can see there's a little bit of some wear marks on the top of the trigger where it was clearly rubbing on the frame. And that's more than just casual rubbing. I mean, it was, I think it was getting a little bit wedged in there, which was the cause of the grittiness. Um, so, you know, if you take your trigger out and if you have that problem, you can probably, without any concern, just take a little uh, light stoning to the top of this and really smooth it out. Probably fix that problem right away. Uh, it also comes with this little plastic catch. This is to facilitate uh, field stripping uh, the gum, what you would normally do. To use this, lock the slide to the rear, snap this little clap onto the full length guide rod that's exposed, and at that point it's kind of holding this whole assembly uh, together and it makes removing this spring assembly a lot easier. I know that I'll lose this in very short order if I keep this in my range bag, so I've practiced taking this apart without the use of that. I'll show you how this helps when I take this apart. Uh, so the way that I assemble and disassemble this field strip it is I just bring this back to this takedown notch here so the slide stop can pop out. Pull that out, slide this off. And this is where this little clip would come in handy. Uh, if this was compressed and held compressed, it makes it taking it out easier, but I can just you know, put it on a flat surface, pinch the two pieces of the guide rod together, like so, and just lift it up over the, over the barrel bushing. And then you can take the reverse spring cap out. So if you had this clip in there, it would normally be holding this thing compressed like that, which does make it a lot easier to slide it in and out with, with no pressure or no problem. Um, like I said, I'm liable to lose this very quickly, so I just practice not using it. Uh, while I have this apart, let me talk about one other issue that I found. And that is that the chamber is is quite tight. Now it's been perfectly functional with any factory range uh, factory ammunition that I've tried, but a lot of my reloads it has had some problems returning to battery um, where they don't quite drop in. You can see that this one is sitting just a little bit proud of what would be the breech face right here. Now I could push that in uh, where it's binding up. You can see there's a shiny ring right here. It's binding up right there where my resizing die doesn't get down all the way to the base uh, of the cartridge. So to fix that, uh, I did order a Lee undersized resizing die that's supposed to reach down a little bit further, um, but I'm still probably going to ream this out one thousandth or so. I don't want to make it any deeper. Uh, the headspace is good. The rifling is in good position. But I, I do want this a little bit more forgiving for my reloads. Uh, if you're using factory ammunition, I'm sure that's not going to be a problem for you. Reassembly is just the reverse. Slide the barrel in. Uh, if you're not using that plastic catch, uh, it's easiest if you put the spring plug in there first, insert the end of the spring, and again, just pinch these two parts together as tight as you can, it pops right down on there. Slide this back on. Line up the, line up the uh, link with the hole. Drop your slide stop in there. Get this back to the notch. Slide it in. Good to go. Function check. Right. So, <clears throat> accuracy, I took this, like I said, I took this to the range, uh, throw up a picture of the target, and some comparisons that I did. Uh, I didn't have another 1911 and 9mm to compare it to, so I was comparing it to uh, this SIG P229, which weighs almost the exact same 
weight. Um, and I compared it to a couple of alloy framed uh, 1911s that are government size, full size, uh, chambered in 45. So you can see that with the range officer, I had a couple of flyers. This was at eight yards. Um, with that five and a half pound, slightly gritty trigger, the lighter frame, it's a little easier to just barely pull it off target. And I could tell as soon as I broke the shot that it was my fault that uh, I had, had done that. So since I've gotten back from the range, uh, like I said, I replaced this trigger uh, to get rid of that last little bit of grit. And I did a little bit more work on the hammer and sear to get it down to four pounds, one ounce, which is pretty much exactly where I like it. Uh, if you're not comfortable working on 1911 triggers and sears and hammers, I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself. I do have all the proper jigs and stoning tools and stuff like that, so I, I do it myself. But uh, otherwise, I would suggest sending it to a qualified uh, smith. Uh, all in all, I am very happy with this uh, with this gun. As, as you can see from the targets, it's plenty accurate. My primary purpose is not for carrying this but for range and some quick action pistol uh, shooting events and, and things of that sort. Um, but if you did want to carry it, I think it's a great great carry weapon. I would probably get it in 45 if I was planning on carrying it and probably wouldn't have done any trigger work because I think, you know, a five to six pound trigger is probably more appropriate for a carry piece than, uh, than the lighter four pound trigger. Um, other changes that I plan on doing uh, to this gun, as I mentioned, I will be changing out this rear sight and I'll probably do a separate video on that, uh, which would also demonstrate the sight pusher that I use, uh, sort of a universal sight pusher. Uh, I'll be changing out these these grips. I like the look of the wood grips. Uh, kind of wish they hadn't put the Rain Jefferson Champion right here, but, but uh, for me, these double diamonds here and the Springfield logo uh, where there is no checkering on the grip, meaning that this portion, portion of the grip is just a little bit slicker. And that's exactly where I'd actually prefer to have a little bit more grip so that when my hand comes over the, and hits, it actually rides right on that smooth part. So I'll be changing these out for probably some VZ operators or something similar. Um, so replace the trigger, that was just for aesthetics more than function. Replace the sights, replace the grips. I will probably be putting a uh, Ed Brown uh, Magwell on here uh, again for my kind of action pistol-y type events which will mean that uh, I'll be ditching the ILS system because I'll be replacing this mainspring so uh, most likely this is uh, this is the Magwell that I'll or one like this that I'll be putting on there it's just an Ed Brown two-piece Magwell and have to replace the guts of the uh, of the mainspring housing uh, when I do that because it's not compatible with the ILS system. Um, so that was just a quick look at the range officer champion again, commander size, four inch barrel, full size grip. Uh, if you're thinking about one, I'm very happy with this uh, with this gun. I think it is a fantastic piece. Uh, just as an Final note, if you were planning on getting one of these for carry purposes, you know, my normal uh, carry piece is a Walther PPS. Uh, this is a holster for the PPS inside the waistband. And you can see that it actually fits, fits right into that holster. Obviously this is a little bit longer than the PPS. Um, but from a thickness perspective, I mean, it, it fits right in there very, very, uh, very nicely. Uh, so it's about the same thickness, and I prefer the thickness of these single stacks over the thickness of something like the, uh, the SIG double stack or Glock double stack, which is just a little bit too thick for me for inside the waistband to be comfortable. Um, but fantastic gun overall, very happy with the purchase. I think uh, if you pick one up, you should be very happy as well. Just don't complain about the sights. It is a six o'clock hold. It's clearly stated in the manual. That's what it is. Um, so I'll be changing that out to get this uh, point of impact a little bit lower. Um, but that's it. Springfield Armory, Range Officer Champion, Commander Size 1911 in 9mm. Thanks for watching.